I say, men love women. But even more than that, men love cars. You know, no, no, I, I love women. I'm still a man. Rush, released in 2013 and is directed by Ron Howard, who is behind such films as Apollo 13, The Da Vinci Code, Cinderella Man, and he was also called in to save that Star Wars movie, the Han Solo origin thing. Yeah, they had directors, but then three weeks before principal photography was supposed to be completed, they were like, yeah, you foyered, and then they brought in Ron Howard to change everything. But I'm sure everyone is just gonna love it because that's what all of us Star Wars fans like to do. We like to say that, oh my god, this is the best Star Wars movie ever, the first weekend or two, and then after that, then we start picking it apart and then we start bashing on it. Don't deny it, guys. We all know what happened. The film stars Chris Hemsworth, Daniel Bruhl, Olivia Wilde, and Alexandra Maria Lara. Rush is the true story about the rivalry between Formula One racers Nicky Lauda and James Hunt during the 1976 racing season. This is a great look at these two rivals and how they got started in the minor leagues, how they got into Formula One, and how they both desired to become champion. Well, it's actually established pretty early on in the film that Nicky Lauda had already won the championship the previous year. So in all actuality, this is about Lauda defending his championship and James Hunt looking to claim it. And wow, what a great movie! And Ron Howard, he is a great director, but when it comes to the critical reception of his films, it's either people absolutely love it or people absolutely despise it. It's very rare that you get any middle ground when it comes to criticism on his movies. And this one, I have to put on the side of absolutely loving it, which was an absolute shock to me. Now, I am not a racing fan by any means. I've tried watching it before, and I was completely bored out of my mind. And I've never entertained the thought about going to an actual race because I like to have my eardrums intact. But Ron Howard somehow was able to get me interested in the sport of racing and entertained by it. Probably to the point of where I actually care about it. And more specifically about these two racers who are both complete assholes in their own right. Daniel Bruhl is an absolute talent. My first blood with him was his role as the sniper in Inglorious Bastards, and you know what? I actually liked him as Zemo in Captain America Civil War. Not Baron Zemo, because... Yeah, we don't want to do that costume. And he plays Nicky Lauda in this movie, who comes off as 100% pure asshole. But you can't help but root for this guy because his assholiness comes from telling the truth. And you really can't hate someone for telling the truth. He straight out calls people out on their shit. He says, this car sucks. The mechanic says, you can't say that. This is a Ferrari and you work for Ferrari. And Lauda says, uh, just because I work for him doesn't mean that this car is not a piece of shit. He has no social skills. He doesn't know how to say something softer when it's bad. Remember that scene from Robin Hood Men in Tights where King John said, wait, I got an idea. Maybe if you tell me the bad news in a good way, it won't sound so bad. Lauda, no concept of that. However, Chris Hemsworth as James Hunt is the complete opposite. He has endless social skills, he's a very approachable person, and he's not bad to look at. You can tell that this guy has such a drive to become champion and to be the best at what he does, and it absolutely pisses him off that Nicky Lauda became champion by basically buying his way into Formula One. Hunt is a very passionate driver. A lot of his decisions that he makes while racing and in life are based on emotions and feelings, which has its own pros and cons as opposed to Lauda's basically complete logical thinking. There's no gut feelings with Lauda, it's all up here. God gave me a talented ass. Ass because he can feel everything in the car that's off. Yeah. And Hunt is seen as a bad boy in the eyes of the Formula One representatives and all of the sponsors. He's reckless, drinking, drugs, a lot of girls, all that fun stuff. But this is what I'm saying, in a typical film, audiences tend to relate more with the person that's more passionate about things than the person that's kind of the logical asshole. But somehow, Ron Howard has made me split right down the middle. I care about both of these people equally. And it's a wonderful experience. Olivia Wilde and Alexandra Marie Lara do a good job as the women in both of these racers' lives, but I do feel they come off more like trophy wives in this movie. And that's it. 
I kind of don't like to see that. And it comes off of, well, one of them gets married, so the other one thinks, well, shit, I have to, too. But there is a really strong relationship with Lara and Brule's character in this movie, as opposed to Hemsworth and Wilde. And I like Wilde as Susie Miller, who is a career-driven model who really loves James Hunt. But Hunt is just so passionate about racing and beating Lauda that, yeah, I don't blame Susie Miller for leaving James Hunt. And no, that is not a spoiler because that actually happened. If it actually happened in history, spoilers ain't on me. But I really like Alexandra as Marlene in this film. I think that anyone who has made the decision that, yup, I'm gonna be with this asshole of a man, probably has to be a wonderful person. And I really love her for it. And she is able to get emotion out of Lauda even though it's a small amount, and it's a beautiful thing to see. And honestly, this movie is wonderful in every aspect. The sound design of the car engines is awesome, and I love the cinematography. The camera really gets the audience into the cockpit of these Formula One cars, and you really feel the adrenaline and the danger that Formula One racers have to deal with. I mean, you're going at almost 200 miles an hour, one slight miscalculation, a little tweak here, a little twerk there, and yeah, you're wiping out and you're probably dying. Makes you wonder why people actually do this. So in the end, I'd have to say that Rush is probably one of the best movies in Ron Howard's repertoire. We have really great performances. There's a very kinetic energy behind the editing of the film and the cinematography really makes the audience feel like they're traveling at 200 miles an hour and the dangers that go with that. And I am shocked that this movie wasn't even nominated for a single Academy Award. I would have easily put this in the nominations with Best Picture or Best Director. Director. But what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna give Rush four and a half out of five Blu rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm watching next. Let's take a look. Justice League, The Throne of Atlantis. I think that this is my first direct-to-DVD movie that I'm doing on this channel. And I'm absolutely okay with that. I just saw the live-action Justice League in the theaters, so I'm super pumped to get a little bit more of Aquaman here. I've only watched this one, I think, once, so it'd be really interesting to go back and see it. So, everyone, have you seen Rush? What did you think about it? Or, if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, please comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And when you're done commenting, please like and subscribe to my channel so you know the next time I post my next movie review. And, everyone, don't forget that on Christmas Day this year, I'm going to be releasing my ranking of the best superhero movies of 2017. So, please join me on Christmas Day, December 25th. So, Hello everyone, I will see you next time with my review of Justice League Throne of Atlantis. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care guys.